had lived uh, in, in, in both countries from time to time. Uh, virtually every one of the major figures, I, I would dare say, have spent and researched in one of the other Anglo-American countries over the course of their career, and often for longer times. I lived in England uh, for in 72, 73, and then again from 1980 to 1986, um, fairly consistently. Uh, and it's been a major influence on my life and, um, and my children's life as well. Um, so that there's a, uh, a, an inner connection, both in terms of institutions and individuals. Um, third, finally, as a way of introduction, not finally, the centers of research are fairly small. A handful of places within uh, the UK and in the past, Oxford and Cambridge, uh, the LSE, and then in due course, more uh, research and teaching areas, University of Toronto, and in the United States, a handful of, stud of universities that took up police studies as opposed to criminology. And uh, I, I, I would include there Harvard, Michigan State, and uh, University at Albany, which is an odd group, but that's uh, in terms of the pedigrees and, and, and graduates of that university, those universities, they are very thick on the ground here. Um, the funding issues that I'll come back to, but basically most of the funding has been uh, a, a product of the current uh, if issues, the Kerner Report, the McGann Report, the Scarman Report, the McPherson Report, and so on each of which stimulated funding. So for about 10 years, community policing was the buzzword that covered everything. Now it will be terrorism and homeland security. So now it will be how rural policing fits into to, to, uh, uh, homeland security or how uh, taxi drivers, uh, re renegade taxi drivers in New York City are really a part of the, this uh, homeland security issue. So that you get a big covering umbrella and then the money goes much to the same people again, to PERF, to the police foundation, to law, Institute of Law and Justice, Institute of Urban Justice, uh, and, and so on. So it really doesn't matter very much what you call it. <coughs> but this is a sustaining effort to keep these big organizations alive, as well as to occasionally spread the largesse to someone under the age of 40. Uh, and that's rare, but it does happen. Um, now, the, some of these things I've already mentioned, but there are some central differences in the funding and the organization of research in the UK and the US, and I'm trying to get to the uh, way in which we can, we can move uh, uh, forward on this. But basically, to put it in a simple terms, the, the funding and drive and direction is much more uh, in, in the UK, much more centralized even amongst the police themselves. If, if, an, if, if ACPO or a police research group uh, wants to send forward and encourage funding, it has central in, in innovation, goes forward through uh, particular chosen constabularies. Uh, the training is much more centralized, obviously, in the UK. There's much more accountability, public accountability through the, uh, through the police board, through the home office, through the HMI, through frequent inspections uh, and complaints boards, all of which are uh, undeveloped or uh, thinly developed in this country, and as Sam Walker has suggested, uh, virtually uh, short lived. The innovation, therefore, tends to come from the center and to move through, whereas in the United States, uh, by tradition and by practice, much local innovation is being done. So the Wheel is being reinvented in many, many cities all over the United States. Uh, whatever aspect we talk about here, there will be a variation of it, as uh, Laurie's uh, set of questions suggests. Um, what I think that is overemphasized, and that we, we need some research to investigate, is the idea that the occupational cultures are the same. That whatever you look in the Anglo-American world, it's really the same thing. Um, Secondly, that the British police are more or less violent than, than the American police and, and encounter more violence, use more violence. With, only with the Mastrovsky studies do we get some attempt to see to what extent American policing is, quote, violent and in what, to what degree. Um, but we don't have equivalent comparable work. The status, have the status of police gone up or down over the past few years? The role of education and training and the quality of policing as effective practice. No one really knows. I mean, uh, 
it, I think it's safe to say that the stories that Ed told yesterday are still going on every day, will continue to go on every day, and uh, that basically those have no bearing or are unaffected by training. All the research shows the same thing. Training has virtually no effect. All of it. Uh, so whether or not it makes a difference to centralize, decentralize, regionalize, make university education, in my way of thinking and with the research suggests virtually no difference at all. Um, the management and managerialism are shaping policing. I think it's a dubious question. I don't know. It's certainly in the air. It's certainly a part of the market share notion. I'm not sure. I don't accept the, the categorical kind of uh, generalization you find in Erickson and Hagerty or in Clifford's uh, work. Uh, I just don't accept it. The American policing, for example, is so highly fragmented and so different in its local context and its cultures that it is very difficult to make any sort of generalizations of, except at the level of abstraction that one uses to teach 14-year-olds, which is about where the students are in my university. Now, um, whether or not the police have become more scientific or surveillance-oriented, risk management-oriented, and all the like, I think is a dubious assumption. I don't think there's any research that shows it. I think the claim's based on thin ethnography. I think we don't really know to what extent these kinds of transitions are going on. I will say, and I have talked with many of you about it, the crime mapping, intelligence-based policing is the primary way in which change is going to occur. And I think it's tied in with other matters, but I think it's, uh, it, it is, it's actually going to have a major force. Let me talk a little bit now, uh, and I realize the, 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 the time constraints. I'd like to talk briefly about the, uh, some of the anomalies in research in both countries. And some of this comes into some central issues that I hope we'll discuss in due course, given the time remaining to us. Um, first of all, Michael Banton, in a very early paper, um, talked about the difference between a sociology of the police and a sociology for the police. And the idea of, of the police meant an analytic, distant, as Milan was talking about, objective, quote, scientific uh, 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 approach in raising serious questions about the basic contradictions of the work and how, it, it is, how it's maintained institutionally through ideology and so on. And this, this is a, 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 what we might call somewhat theoretically driven enterprise where a handful of ideas have been excessively uh, influential. And uh, I, again, I need not repeat them, but certainly, certainly Wilson, Skolnick, uh, Wesley, uh, works that were done some 50 years ago, 40 to 50 years ago, uh, still quoted as essentially the case, but nevertheless. The second of the Sociology for the police is the kind of uh, activity we saw in Laurie Friedel's presentation. How to make the police better? Well, it's full of the tautologies and the cliches of buzzword management and uh, uh, based on data that are absolutely flawed in the deepest possible way. And it maintains the, the pretense that there's something going on that's being measured, whereas in fact it's not. It's a media construction based on imagery and imagination and not based on data. So it's not surprising that the $8 billion that the cops poured into police research, so far as we can tell, and Ed McGuire's work is the best on this matter, the changes in effects are rather marginal and take a very sophisticated uh, statistical approach to discern. So that we have a very difficult problem here of the primary thing of the last 10 years being treated a, as a sociology for the police. Now the question might arise, what exactly is for them in this idea? What exactly is for them? And I'm not sure. 